Hello. The goal of this video is simple. I will define the transition from a traditional to a digitized learning unit primarily from a teacher's perspective. So let's start. How did you organize teaching in the 20th century? How did you prepare a simple learning unit, that is, one session within, let's say, a 10 weeks course? Supposing you are not a writer of a textbook about exactly that topic, you probably first went to the library, selected your sources, which then were all third-party sources, and put them together to generate the main content for your session, let's say, for a lecture. This content was then delivered either by you or by other presenters or within a seminar, even by means of group work, to your audience. And your students would apply their own content acquisition principles. Some of them would diligently write down every word you say, others just listened and again others marked passages in pre-prepared workbooks. In addition to this, you probably had additional material, that is, handouts, research data, lists with quotations, tasks to be solved in class, and of course, homework. So, this then was the main scenario. In-class teaching, subsequent self-guided deepening and problem-solving. Let's now digitize exactly this scenario. First, the content. Now, ideally a combination of multimedia elements with a high degree of interactivity. This is what we have been producing for the Virtual Linguistics Campus and other platforms for more than 15 years. But it's time-consuming, expensive and requires a big team. For this reason, multimedia production will be the exception rather than the rule. Today many institutions believe that educational video can serve as the backbone of the content of a learning unit instead. That's generally true, but be careful. Do not produce any kind of video and do not rely on video alone. In my e-lecture Videos for teaching and learning, you can find a number of parameters that are essential for the production of video. So I do not have to go into details here. Well, and where do the videos come from? Well, either you produce them yourselves, I can tell you that's really easy, or you use third-party material, if available. For example, our Virtual Linguistics Campus YouTube channel has now joined forces with another channel and we mutually use, promote and quality assure our videos. As a result, most of our courses in linguistics and web technology that are offered via the Virtual Linguistics Campus use a combination of self-produced multimedia and video plus freely accessible material from third-party sources. In particular, this means the content now combines web-based trainings with educational video and lots of interactive tools. The content delivery strategies heavily rely on modern information technology. Students can use almost any device to access the material. Well, and content acquisition is as flexible as possible, allowing the learners to apply their own strategy and their own time management. Additionally, each unit involves a variety of add-ons, such as practicals with model solutions, data sheets, mastery tests, all of course also in a digital format. We have been using such digital scenarios in almost all our courses for several years. In on-campus courses, where the in-class phase is dedicated to intensive practicing and deepening, that is, in an inverted classroom scenario, in online courses with intensive tutor-student interaction, for example, in our online master's degree program, Web Development for Linguistics, and also for our students who are abroad or absent for any reason, and 
in our massive open online courses, which nowadays run almost automatically. Of course, there's more to digitization than just the conversion of a learning unit into a digital format. For example, the integration of the social media, the integration of ebook formats, and so on. The main effort, however, has to be invested in producing the digital content. Once you have such scenarios at your disposal, the benefits for you as teachers, but also for your students, are enormous. But that's another story which I will tell in further educational videos about this topic. See you then.